Let's create a scrollable area in Unreal Engine 5. This is something where most tutorials are very out of date and full of holes, so I wanted to show you how I do it and give you some heads up on some potential problems you might run into. First things first, we're going to need a widget, so let's create one. There we are, widget. We can call this whatever we want, let's go ahead and call it scrollable area. Pop that open and let's create the layout we're going to need for our widget. We're going to be using panels here. Now your layout does not have to be precisely like this one, but this one works pretty well. We're going to use a canvas panel as our basic panel. Then we're going to use another canvas panel. This is going to be our view area. We can put this wherever we want. This is going to be the window through which we see whatever is behind it. This is our scrollable view. Behind that, we're going to go ahead and use a grid panel for the actual content we plan to do any scrolling on. We're going to go ahead and name that content area, and we're going to make it into a variable, like so. Let's go ahead and add some content to our content area. Let's go ahead and add an image. And let's make that image into Jackie Chan. No, that's not Jackie Chan. That's Jackie Chan. The basic idea is that this will move around and we'll be able to see different parts of Jackie through this window here. But there are a few things about this that aren't quite ready. One is that these green borders are really wrong. This is not the expanse of Jackie's face. So in order to fix that, we're going to turn on size to content on our content area. And look at that. Now all of Jackie is highlighted. The other thing we're going to want to do is, uh, this is too much Jackie. We, we, we can see way too much Jackie. Let's go ahead and hit the view area, go down to clipping, and turn clipping to clip to bounds. There we are. Ah, that's the right amount of Jackie. The other thing we're going to need, to, the other thing we need to do is add this to our level. So over here, we're going to open up our level blueprint, and we're going to create a widget. There we go. And we're going to create the scrollable widget that we just created, and we are going to add it to the viewport. Now you can look up tutorials specifically on this if you want. I'm not going to go over it in detail here, but that's basically all we need to do. And there we go. We can see him just fine, but he's not um, scrolling. So how do we make him scroll? Well, we just tell him to respond to mice. So we're going to come over here into the graph on our scrollable area. Over here under functions, we're going to override the on mouse move function. There it is. The thing we need here is the mouse delta. This cursor delta tells us how much the mouse has moved since the last time we checked. All we need to do is take our content area and add this much to its position. Now you could directly edit the transforms, but I think the more common approach is to get the slot as a canvas slot. This is a very strange thing to think about, but basically it means that we're not going to have to worry about trying to translate coordinates. Everything is already properly scaled and everything is already properly localized. We get the position, and then all we need to do is add these two positions together. and set the position. Now we're going to keep these lines pretty clean because it's a tutorial. Just moving things around to be clean. There we go. What we're doing is very basic. We're just uh, taking the position that it currently is and adding however far the mouse moved. But if we hit compile, we're going to get an error. Return value should not be empty. Return a reply such as handled or unhandled. Well, since we handled it, let's return handled. That tells the game engine that nothing else has to respond to that mouse move. It's, it's ours. Oh, look at that. It works fine, but there's something weird happening. So what's happening is the on mouse move event only gets called when the mouse is on top of our viewable area. The instant the mouse moves off of our viewable area, we lose that on mouse move event. That's something that you might have to deal with in a variety of ways. There are tutorials on that elsewhere. We'll talk about that later. But for now, there's another issue. We don't want him to move whenever we just move the mouse. We want this to be like a right click drag. So 
what happens when we try and right click to drag? Oh, it, it actually breaks. Why, why did it break? Well, that's because Unreal Engine is an engine built for first person shooters, and it thinks we're just trying to enter into first person shooter mode. So it has decided that the mouse cursor should go to the first person shooter man that is very clearly behind Jackie somewhere. That's not a great default for us, so let's go ahead and change those defaults. The easiest way to do that is to create a custom game mode and a custom player controller class. These are things you should get used to making. I know that a lot of newbies are really alarmed at the idea of a custom game mode and a custom player controller. Don't worry about it. These are fundamental parts of making any game, even a prototype, in Unreal Engine. So let's create them. We'll call this Tut Mode. And we'll call this Tut PC. And then over here in our world settings, we're going to go ahead and make this a Tut Mode level with a Tut PC player controller class. Now, when we open up the Tut PC over here, mouse interface, show mouse cursor, click, compile that, save it, hit play. And look, we keep the mouse even after we've clicked. So that's that solved, kind of. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, it's that easy. You can also do that using nodes. So for example, if you only want to show the mouse cursor when the player's map pops up, you can do that. But for the sake of this demo, we're just going to do it with a player controller class by fiat. But uh, we want Jackie only to move when we right click and drag him. We don't want to always be moving him around. So how do we do that? Well, we just have our scrollable area only move him when we right click. So we check and see whether or not there is a mouse button right click. So if we are right clicking, then guess what? We want to do all of that stuff and handle the event. But if we're not right clicking, if it's just a normal mouse move or if we're left clicking, we want to return an unhandled event. There it is. Now why is that? Well, imagine if this game was about clicking on Jackie's face, and we had specific parts of Jackie's face that would respond if he clicked on them. If we were constantly returning that we were handling it, then we would never be able to click on Jackie's face because the scrolling area would always say, every mouse event is handled by me, nothing gets through. But if only the right clicks get through, or if only the right clicks get stopped, all of our other things get through and we can interact with Jackie's face or whatever. So that's what we're doing there. Now when we shrink this down, we hit play and we can, uh, wait, it's not, it, it's not working. Why isn't it working? Wait, if I double right click, it works. The, the heck what's going on here? This is a very common problem and it's really hard to look up the answer to for some reason. But the problem here is that Unreal Engine is built for first person shooters and so it thinks your first person, your first click is going to that first person shooter man, the one behind Jackie somewhere that we can clearly see. Obviously that's wrong and this is a situation, an edge case, that only comes up in very specific situations. You may never have this problem if you're not trying to do exactly what we're doing here. But the fix is to tell it to stop trying to send our clicks to the 3D world. We only want them sent to the UI. To do that, we're going to use a node. So over here in our Toot Player Controller, we're going to go into the event graph and under Begin Play, we're going to tell it to set the input mode to UI only. You see our options here? By default, it's normally set to Game and UI. But when we set to UI only, we get a much better set of responses. Now, because we're inside the player controller, this is going to work fine. But if you're not doing this inside the player controller, you're going to have to keep track of the player controller separately. Hmm. Why didn't that work? Look at that. It needs a valid player controller target. So that's what I'm talking about. We just go ahead and point it to ourselves. And look, it works fine now. Once again, if you're doing this only for part of your game, like if you're only freeing up the mouse when the map pops up, you're obviously going to want to switch it back to another mode 
once you're done with your map. This looks pretty complete, right? Is this is this all we needed? Well, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things we could do to polish this up. For example, if we right-click and drag, we still lose control of Jackie when we right-click off of the side. See that? Even though, in theory, he should be active and focused, we're not getting that. There are a lot of ways around that. I'm going to leave that up to a separate tutorial. There are lots of tutorials on how to keep focused and have mouse events directed in the proper place. But there is another thing that we need to discuss, and that is canvas panels. If you've ever done this before, one of the big problems you may have noticed is that when you scroll up like this, it'll just suddenly stop rendering. So that's a problem with canvas panels. And if we go back over into here, you'll notice that our scrollable area, the designer view, this content area isn't a canvas panel. It's a grid. And I did that specifically because the canvas panel's size to content is a little bit busted, at least as of you know March 2023. And it's been busted for at least 10 years. In many situations, the canvas panel will not properly size to content, and so when you drag it off the top or off the left-hand side, it will simply stop rendering because it thinks that there's no content on the screen. So if you use a different kind of thing, like a, like a, you know, a grid, that's not going to be an issue. The size to content works perfectly fine. So if you are having an issue where when you drag it off to the side, it just suddenly vanishes, try using something that's not a canvas panel. That's it. Have a good one.